were just putting our cigarettes out, getting ready to go off, and, and the kid comes across the loudspeaker system, and he says, uh, all fog phone machines, man your stations. It wasn't probably a minute, two minutes. He comes back over and he says, all firefighting teams, man your stations now. And then it was probably 30 seconds, maybe no more than a minute. He come over to speak to this kid's crying. And he says, all hands, man your battle stations. And then he hits the G2 uh, horn. Uh, you ever hear that? It's, it just sticks in your craw. <laughs> Because it's just a bong, 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 bong. As I got up and started to run, that's when the first bomb went go. It knocked me off my feet, threw me against the ball field. I got up and I just, I said, man, there's something going on. So as I'm coming down through here, I'm seeing these airdales come down and they're missing limbs. They're bloody. They're, so I know something, something bad is going on. What we're doing is we're running uh, air tanks to them. Uh, we're uh, anything they need. They holler, we go get it, we bring it back, and they're just in front of us fighting all these fires. Because when the bombs went off, it opened up the flight deck, and all the aviation fuel was pouring down through the ship. Uh, aft steering, which is all the way in the back of the ship, and they they give the orders, and they actually steer the ship back there. These guys were trapped back there, and there was just fire all all around them. And um, Commander Rowland got on the radio and he talked to them guys for hours until he got no answer anymore. Uh, they all died. Then they finally come to us and they said, look, what we need to do is we have a bunch of bodies up there. We need to get them out. So me and the second class said, okay, we'll grab a stretcher and we'll go up and we'll start doing it. And we're in water up to our chest from all the water coming off the flight deck and, and everything else. There's no lighting up there, so we got batter lanterns, which are the big old flashlight, flashlights and that. You're walking in all this water and something bump you, you grab it, it's an arm or it's a leg or whatever, and you pick it up and put it in the basket that we have. So we're walking and he says, you know what, let's go get a cup of coffee because we've been going for, I think, at least 48 hours, something like that. Let's go get a cup of coffee. So we're walking and I can feel my leg shaking more and more and then my arms started shaking. We're having coffee and it finally hit me and I started crying. So during the fire, what kept you going? What kept you? Well, two things. Number one, your home is that ship. If it goes down, you're swimming. That's number one. Number two, uh, the old man come over and said, guys, I need you to really work hard. To, we got to save this thing and bring her home. And I think everybody did it because of that. So how do you look back on I wouldn't trade it. I wouldn't trade it. No. I, I really wouldn't. Uh, with the fire? Or? Even with the fire, because I, I've always said, uh, I look at the generations of kids today and w what's going on and that. Uh, and, Back in these, in the days of Nam, World War II, and stuff like that, you learned to become a man in your early 20s. 